Hello viewers, welcome to K-Diagnostics, Dio here. Today we have a 2013 Chevy Corvette with a 6.2 liter. The customer complaint on this car is that there are a couple lights that are remaining on while the engine is running. Some of those lights are the ABS light, the traction control light, and some other lights. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go inside the car and confirm the customer's complaint. After confirming the customer's complaint, we're going to connect the scan tool to the car so we can find out what's causing these lights to remain on on the dash. So let's go inside the car and confirm the customer's complaint. I'm going to start it so we can confirm the customer's complaint. Oh, listen to that. Boom. <laughs> the sound of the power, baby. So these three lights here remained on the ABS light, the traction control light and the brake light. So the customer is concerned about these lights. We're not going to worry about the tire pressure monitor light. I believe one of the tires is probably low in pressure or maybe this one of the sensors is bad. So we're just going to focus on these three lights right here. So customer's complaint confirmed. So now I'm going to connect the scan tool to the car so we can find out what kind of trouble codes we have in the ABS control unit. So I'm going to turn off the car. So the car is off. So now I'm going to turn the key on. So how do you turn on the ignition on this one? This is weird. Look at this guys. It's a push start button. So basically when you push once and then the second time it's supposed to turn the ignition on but nothing happens. But I know if I step on the brake pedal, it's gonna start. How do you put this, how do you turn the ignition on on this thing? So once, twice, three times. Okay, but if I step on the brakes, it's gonna start. Well, that's weird. I'm just gonna scan it with the engine running. I hope you guys can hear me okay with that loud engine. So let's scan this. Let's go to scanner. Uh, this is a Chevrolet. It's a 2013. Let's auto ID it. Right there, the scan tool has identified the car, 2013 Chevrolet Corvette with a 6.2 liter. Let's click OK. All right, so we can go a couple ways with this. We can go to code scan, it's gonna scan all the modules, or we can just go straight to the anti-lock brakes control module. I'm just gonna go straight to the ABS control module. So let's go to codes menu, display codes, current codes and right here this is the trouble code we have in memory CO110 pump motor malfunction I hope you guys can see this okay so this is our trouble code right here so let's go to diagnose and see what we're gonna find here and it looks like we don't have any TSBs about this trouble code and there are no vehicle specific data for it um, well, this is good. Let's back out of here. Uh, now the next step I want to make is I want to go to the troubleshooter and look this code up. Remember our code is CO110. So let's back out of here and out of here again. And let's go to troubleshooter, ABS. Let's go to codes chip. So our code is going to be under this category, chassis control, CO1, I think it was CO110, right? Here is our trouble code, CO110, let's click on it, right here, CO110, pump motor circuit, circuit slash system description. So let's read the description. The pump motor is integral, part of the brake pressure modulator valve, BPMV. While the pump motor relay is integral to the electronic brake control module, 
EBCM, the pump motor relay is not engaged during normal system operation. When the anti-lock brake system, ABS, or traction control system, TCS, operation is required, the BCM activates the pump motor relay and turns the pump motor on. Okay, that's good to know. And then conditions for running the DTC, ignition is on, initialization is complete. And then conditions for setting the DTC, the EBCM, so electronic brake control module, detects a short to ground or an open slash high resistance on the battery circuit or B plus circuit. I mean the, the power feed to the control unit. Uh, the EBCM detects an open slash high resistance on the ground circuit. The EBCM detects the pump motor runs continuously. The EBCM detects the pump motor is binding or stalled. Okay, and then you know it goes on to say you know action taken, uh, some of the things that we can do to check this. So it looks like uh, this code set when there is either a open a short to ground or high resistance in one of the wires that supply power or ground to the ABS control unit. I mean, I don't think we have an issue with all the grounds and all the powers because we are able to communicate with this ABS control unit because right now we are inside the ABS control unit. It's, I mean, I'm just backing out of here so I can show you guys. Uh, so right now we are really well if we are able to read the codes is because we can communicate with this control unit okay so let me see if this is a hard fault now that we know what our fault is I'm going to clear this code so clear codes let me clear this code and see if it's gonna come right up all right so let's go let's let's do that one more time clear codes Right there, codes cleared successfully. Now let's continue. Let's go to display codes and see if the same code is still gonna be there. No codes, okay. History codes, no codes. So right here, no codes present, but the vehicle is still running. But well, look on the dash. Our lights are still on. I just cleared I just cleared the trouble codes right there okay no codes present but our brake light the ABS light and the traction control light are still on on the dash so I think it's just a matter of time this trouble code will come back up so let's back out of here and see if the code is gonna come back up just by exiting out of here so let's exit out Actually, let me turn it off and see what happens. All right, so the car is off. Let me start it one more time. I'm sorry that I have to do this with the engine running and this is a loud engine. I hope you guys can hear me okay. So let's go back to the ABS control module. Let's go to codes menu. And right there, our trouble code came right back up. Okay, right there. So this CO110 just came right up. And our lights on the dash are still on. So, what's the next step from this point on, guys? What is the next step? So, I am going to turn off the car so we can talk about this. Alright, so let's figure out a plan of attack from the code description and some of the actions that we can take. It's saying uh, no code present because I just turned off the car. Um, okay, from what we saw on the troubleshooter, the issue here is either an open or short or high resistance on some of the power supply or the ground supply wires to the ABS control module. 
Okay. So right here. So first things first, let's start with the easy stuff. Uh, let's pull out the wiring diagram here. Uh, it's just stopping communication because this thing, the key is off. I mean, I can't turn the key on. For some reason, I just can't get the key to turn on. Okay, so let's go to our share truck and repair information here. So we can look at the ABS control unit wiring diagram. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to check our powers and grounds, okay? And this is the uh, Grand Sport. It's a convertible. And this one has got it's an automatic transmission. So let's use this vehicle. So we're going to go to wiring diagrams. And let's go to system wiring diagrams. We're going to click on anti-lock bricks. So right there, we have a two-page wiring diagram. So let's scroll down. Okay, so on the left side of the wiring diagram here is the ABS control unit. And as you can see, this red wire, this wire right here, the first wire on pin one is a power supply. And this is a wire that has power all the time. So it says hot at all times. So hot at all times means with the key off, engine off, this wire should always have power, okay? So we have one wire here we know that should always have power. And then let's keep going now. There is another wire here wire 25 it says battery positive volt so this wire also should have power if everything is fine so basically what we're going to do is we're going to get to the module and check these wires we should have power here if we don't have power at this point our issue might be the fuse actually yeah let me just zoom in this so i can highlight this and so this wire, for example, let me highlight it. So the wire I just highlighted. So this wire, okay. If we don't have power here, our issue might be the fuse. Just take my word for it, guys. I already checked this fuse. I checked fuse 27 and fuse 11. The fuse is a like good, okay. We don't have a fuse issue. So now we're just going to locate this ABS control module and find out where these wires leave. So basically we're going to check the first wire, wire number one, and then we're going to check this one, 25, okay, this power supply wire. And then if we have power on all these wires, we're going to check our ground wires. That's what we're going to do next. So the next step is going to be checking this wire right here. Okay. So ground wire. We're going to check that ground too. So it looks like we have one ground here. And then let's see if there's another ground somewhere. Oh, there's another ground over here. It looks like this control unit has got two ground wires. 38 and the other one is what numbers was that and 13 okay so that's what we're gonna do next we're gonna go under the hood and check our powers and grounds at the ABS control module actually the other thing we could do is trying to bi-directionally turn on the ABS pump to see if it's gonna come on I doubt it will but let's just try So let's go to scanner. We are still in the ABS control unit. Oh, dang, I have to do it with the car running. Scanner.
scanner. Let's go back to the ABS control unit. And let's see if we can command this pump on and off using this bi-directional test we have on the scanner. But with the engine running, I don't think you guys will be able to hear this pump. So I'm gonna command the pump to turn on. So pump on, off, on, off. You guys won't be able to hear because the engine is running and for some reason I just can't turn the ignition on with the engine off. I don't know how this freaking thing works, but um, you just have to take my word for it. I mean, when I'm turning it on and off, nothing is happening, okay? When you turn the ABS pump on, you should be able to hear it come on under the hood and also while you're stepping on the brake pedal you should feel a pulsation while it's, uh, the pump is running but I can't hear it right now so we definitely have something going on and I'm gonna show you the dash so right there our brake light and ABS light and traction control lights are still on on the dash Okay, so we cannot turn this pump on bi-directionally so right now our next plan of attack is going under the hood finding where the abs control unit is we're gonna get to the connector and do some powers and ground tests so i'm gonna turn off the car again all right the car is off so now let's go under the hood and see what we're gonna find all right, so I am under the hood right now and the ABS control unit lives right here. It's just right here in front of the alternator. And it is right there. The pump is back here. I hope you guys can see this. The pump is right around here and the module is right there. And its connector is somewhere over there. So we're gonna go under the vehicle. Hopefully we can have enough room from underneath uh, to get access to the connector so we can do our powers and ground test. This is kind of weird because I couldn't turn the ignition on without starting the engine. I mean every time I press that push start button, I pressed it twice, nothing happened. But as soon as I put my foot on the brakes, it started. Which is right, but how do you turn the ignition on on this freaking Corvette? I don't know, but that's not gonna prevent us from doing our work. I just wanted to turn the ignition on and try to turn this pump, this ABS uh, motor on and off so you guys could hear. I mean, nothing is happening. Just take my word for it, okay? And again, you saw that trouble codes in memory and I erased it and it came right back up. So the pump is definitely not gonna turn on. There's something more than just that. So let's go under the car and see what we're gonna find. We are under the car right now and right there is our ABS control module. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to disconnect this ABS control module electrical connector. Let's get that disconnected. All right, so here it comes. This is the connector for it. There it is. And right there is the module. So I'm going to remove this cover here so we can get access to the wires. All right, so I took the connector cover off. Now we can get access to the wires. The thing is I cannot do this power and ground test while this connector is connected because we don't have enough room to work with up there, okay? So I can't check these powers and grounds while this connector is connected to the module. So the first test we're gonna do is we have to make sure we have power making it to these wires here. So we're gonna check our power wires first. So these two here are our power wires. This red wire with the black tracer and the other one here looks like a red or pink, it looks pink. This one with a white tracer. So I'm gonna get my back probing tool here so we can check these. All right, so let's back probe this first wire. Right, so I got it back probed. And I'm gonna use a test light 
to test this. I have my test light connected to battery ground. So now I'm going to touch this. If we have power coming here, this test light should light. And as you can see, the test light is lit. So we have power on this wire. Okay. So now let's check the next wire. Alright, so same test, test light connected to battery ground, and as you can see my test light is lit, so we have power on these two wires. So I'm going to show you what I just did on the wiring diagram. So basically this is what I did, I checked this first wire, this red with a black tracer, this wire right here. So with my test light connected to ground, when I touched here on the connector, my test light lit. So this tells me that this fuse here is good and the wiring is good as well. So the next thing I did was checking the second wire which is 25. So this wire right here. Okay, so I checked this wire. Let me highlight it for you guys. So I did check this wire, 25. So we have power on this wire and this one, okay? So our powers, our constant powers are good. We have other powers which are ignition, but I haven't checked those yet. The next step I'm gonna do now, since these wires are so easy to locate, I'm going to locate our ground wires. So this wire right here, this black and white wire, is a ground wire. So this one, pin 13, the one I just highlighted. So this is what I'm about to test next. Okay, I'm about to test our ground wires. So this one and this one, so pin 13 and pin 38, okay? So let's go back under the car and test these two ground wires. And this second ground here, pin 38, if you look closely here on the wiring diagram, this one actually supplies ground to the motor. You see our motor right here? So this ground basically goes from this ground point through the module and then it goes to the pump right here and then the module supplies power to turn on the pump and remember we had a code for this pump so maybe the pump itself is bad or maybe the ground is bad so checking these grounds and powers will tell us what's going on with this pump here so let's go back under the car and check these grounds. All right, so we know that these two wires are our power supply wires and we checked them already. So now the next thing we're gonna check is gonna be the ground wires. They are on the other side of the connector. And this one, I hope you guys can see this. It's a black wire with a white tracer. And then there's another one next to it. Hopefully you guys can see. So these two wires are our ground supply wires, okay? this one and that one. So now I'm gonna back probe this. I gotta make sure I'm making good connection there. So I have my ground supply wire back probed. So now I'm gonna switch my test light to battery positive. So I have my test light connected to battery positive now. So if I have good ground here, this test light should light. Uh oh, so the test light doesn't light. Let me make sure I'm making good connection. Oh, nothing guys. Actually, let me see. Maybe we're not making good connection. I'm not, I'm not stuffing the test light right there in the connector because I don't want to spray those terminals, but I'm just touching it gently there and the test light doesn't light. So let's test the other one. Test the other wire and see what happens. So I just back probe the one next to it. My test light is still connected to battery positive. And right there, test light is lit. Okay, so we don't have ground on this wire. All right, so test light is lit. Let's check this on this end. So when I touch there, the test light lights, but when I touch here, nothing happens.
we're definitely missing ground on this second ground supply wire. So let's find out which ground wire is this. So we're gonna do that by going back to the wiring diagram. So from the numbers here on the connector, this wire here, this ground wire, is ground 38. Do you remember what ground 38 was on the wiring diagram? I believe this is the ground that supplies ground, well this is the ground wire that supplies ground to the uh, ABS pump. But let's double check that on the wiring diagram. Alright, so I apologize for the glare guys. We did check this ground here. This is the ground that didn't allow the test light to light. Okay, So once we check this one, nothing happened. I had my test light connected to battery positive and I touched it right here on this pin, right here on the connector, nothing happened. But when I touched the first one, the one over here, the one I just highlighted, when I touched this one, ground 13, my test light lit. But when I touched this one here, I'm sorry for the glare guys, I'm trying to get this at a good angle so that you guys can see what I'm doing. So, right there. Okay, so we don't have a ground here, but we have a ground there. If we don't have ground here, this will explain why this pump does not work because it's not receiving its ground, this motor right here. Okay, so let's see where this ground lives and find it. I believe it's open. Let's see where it lives so we can find it. Actually, no, I have another idea. How about trying to bypass this ground? You know, because if we really have a ground issue, what I could do is I can get a jumper wire and back probe this wire and send a jumper wire because this is a constant ground anyways. So I can get a jumper wire and then send ground straight to it and see what happens. Actually, I'm gonna do that. Let's go back under the car and connect this connector back up and I will connect a jumper wire between this pin here and somewhere on, on the frame so we can send ground to this pin and see what happens. So let's do that. All right, so this wire here on the connector, this black wire with a white tracer, is the wire that didn't have ground, okay? So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna back probe it again. And now I am going to just bypass it with a jumper wire. Okay. So we're gonna use this jumper wire here. So I'm gonna give it full ground from somewhere here on the frame. So now I'm gonna get this and connect it right here on the frame. All right, now. Let me get a test light and double check these two pins and make sure we get we have ground here. So I have my test light still connected to battery positive. So now let's see we have ground here. So our test light is lit. Let's try the next one. All right, now we have ground here too. So we have ground on these two and we also had power on these two. So now I'm going to connect it back up to the module and see what happens. So what we're doing is we're bypassing this ground wire by this jumper wire. So I'm gonna connect it and let's see what happens. All right, so I did get it connected back up and I'm bypassing it with this jumper wire. So now let's lower the car and go back inside the car and see if we can get this code to disappear. And hopefully we can get this pump to turn on. So let's see. All right, so we are back in the car. What I did was I bypassed this ground wire here. Okay, remember we didn't have ground when I back probe this wire here at the connector, wire 38 with the test light. I use a test light connected to battery positive, my test light didn't light. Okay, 
So which told me that the, there is an open between this point, this ground point here, and the pin at the connector. So I back, actually I uh, bypassed it with a jumper wire. So now let's see what happens. So let's back out of here and go to scanner, home tab. I'm gonna have to start it so that we can communicate to this ABS control unit. The engine is running right now. Let's look at the dash first and see if those lights went off. The lights are still on on the dash. That's okay. Maybe it's gonna require erasing the code first. Let's see if this is gonna work. Let's go to scanner. Okay, we are still in the ABS control module. Let's look at the code. So our CO110 is still there. Let's back out of here and let's erase it. So when I first erased this code, the code came back right away. So now let's see what happens after clearing this. Oh, no code presence. Let's see the dash. Haha! -ha. Ta da! What do you know? Right there. The light is off. Actually, let me turn off the car and restart it. Alright, so I just turned off the engine. Let's start it one more time. So the ABS light and traction control lights are on. If everything is good, it should they should go off. Uh, right there. They went off, baby. So what do you guys think? What do you guys think? Let's back out of here. Uh, history codes. So no history codes. Current codes, no current codes. Well, this is a fix, guys. We made the right call. Let's just do this one more time. Codes menu, display codes, current codes, no trouble codes whatsoever. So, perfect. Right there. The light is still off so tell me tell me what you guys think let's back out of here let's look up our wiring diagram again let's go to repair information so here is our wiring diagram So we bypassed that ground wire and now everything is back to normal. Yeah, so this wire right here. We bypassed it and now the light is not coming back on. Right there. So, let's back out of here. And let's go to scanner and let's see if we can turn this pump on. I'm gonna try to turn this pump on and let's see what happens. Now, this motor, this ABS motor. So let's turn it on and off. I mean, with the engine running, I don't know if you guys will hear it, but let's see, hopefully you can. All right, right here, just look at, just look at these pids, actually. Look at the pids. Let me customize this. Look at the pump motor voltage. Let's 
customize this, deselect all, pump motor voltage, system voltage. That's all I want to look at. Just focus on the speed right here. On, you see the voltage on this one? Off, right there. On, the voltage is going up to system voltage. When I turn it off, it goes down, okay? And I can hear the pump actually. I don't know if the camera is picking that up. And right now, the light is on on the dash. Okay. And the pedal is pulsating right now. So I'm going to turn it off. The pump is off now. And the light is still on. Okay. Indicating that the pump has been commanded on. So let's exit out of here. Once we exit out, the, the lights on the dash should go off. Right there, the lights went off as soon as we exited out of that bi-directional test, okay? So, like the one and only scanner Dino says, you have to be able to duplicate your fault to know that you have fixed it. Actually, it's always better to duplicate it because if you can duplicate it, it means you fixed it. So now let's get the scan tool out of here. And you know that the lights are off on the dash. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna turn off the car. Okay, so right here, the car is off. Let's start the car. Initial sweep, and right there, the lights went off. So basically, this is fixed right now. So I'm gonna turn it off one more time. Let's go back under the car and disconnect the jumper wire that we grounded, okay? The ground that we supplied from that pin on the control unit to the frame. Let's disconnect it. And when we come back here, after starting this, the lights should stay on. If the lights stay on, that will confirm to us that that's a fix. I already know it's fixed, but let's just do that one test just to be 1000% sure. Now let's go under the car and disconnect that jumper wire. So I'm under the car right now. This is the jumper wire that are connected between pin 38 and the ground here on the frame. So now I'm gonna disconnect it, okay? It's just disconnected now. So let's go back in the car and start it. Now that we got the ground disconnected, the light should remain on on the dash with the engine running. So let's go back in the car and double check. All right, so we are back here in the car. Uh, now let's start the car and see what happens. A lot of in and out today. Um, we disconnected that jumper wire, so now the control unit only has one ground to it. And with only one ground, we're gonna have the symptoms that we were having before, okay? The lights will remain on. So now I'm gonna start the car and see what happens. Hehehe. <laughs> Yeah, baby, there. So we just duplicated our fault. So that's definitely the issue. Let me turn it off. Let's start it again. And as you can see, our lights remained on right now. So that's definitely the problem. If I bring the scanner back up here, let's see. Let's bring the scanner back here. And let's see if that trouble code, that CO110, came back on. Right there. CO110 came back on. So let's erase it, erase the code. Right there, codes cleared successfully. Let's continue. And let's go to display codes, current codes. And right there, the code is not there, but the light is still on on the dash. And if I cycle the key, you know, if I turn the car off, our code is gonna come right up. Let's back out of here. I'm gonna turn off the car. Car is off. I'm gonna start it. 
the lights on the dash didn't go anywhere. So let's go to current codes. And right there, our trouble code came back up. Okay, so we were able to duplicate the fault. We are on the right track, guys. So basically, this guy here, So this guy, that ground wire, is definitely our problem. This wire here, okay? The one I just highlighted, this wire is a problem because once we bypass it, the pump works, everything comes back to normal. But I went under the car, disconnected the bypass I just made. Now, the dashboard is like a Christmas tree right now. So. We did some tests. We have uh, confirmed the customer's complaint. We were able to duplicate the fault. So this is gonna be pretty easy to fix. So what is the ground that we are dealing with? So this guy right here, uh, J105 is our ground. So this guy, this is the ground. So now we have to pull out the uh, ground distribution so we can find out where this J105 lives okay so I'm gonna turn off the car and let's go to the computer I can just do it on the scan tool actually let's see where this ground lives let's go back to wiring diagram no, actually, no, not. This is not where I want to go. Let's go to service manual. Remember, we are looking for ground uh, G105. So let's go to electrical. Component locations. Mm, let's go to ground supply slash distribution views right here so let's click on that okay right there haha -ha. so we're looking for j105 and well they combine them together but what we're interested in is j105 so let's click on it no not that one this one so right here so this is gonna tell us the location of that ground so right here, there is an engine picture here, and then the call out, so one, G07, and two is G05. Okay, so let's click on this picture. So ours is two. So right here, it looks like our ground lives somewhere under the alternator. Okay. So our ground is basically somewhere around this area, right here. And I believe it also said it on the wiring diagram. If, oh, hold on. No. Uh, if we back out of here. And... If we go to wiring diagram and do system wiring diagrams, on the wiring diagram it told us where this ground was. Right, so this wire right here, okay, and 
right here it tells us where this ground is not this wire come on not you okay so this wire and if you see clearly here it says G105 on front left side of engine above generator why does it say above while it's showing it under the alternator this is kind of weird so right here so this ground is this guy right here I'm gonna show you Okay, so right here. On the wiring diagram, it says that the ground is above the alternator. But here, it says on this schematic here, it says that it's below, because this is the power steering pump. It is below the power steering pump. So let's go under the car and locate this ground wire, uh, this ground point. Let's go and see. We're going to start by looking around this area first, under the power steering pump. And then if we can't find it, then we'll look around this alternator but I know it's definitely around this area but let's start here first so let's go under the hood and find this ground wire I'm back here under the car so now let's locate this ground point and it should be somewhere here under the power steering pump so can you guys see that so that's a ground you see that bolt there's a ground wire next to it do you see that oh that's even better it, it's tough for me to show you guys exactly because it's at a weird angle and there's no room here so let me see if I can put my finger there so this is I believe the crank sensor connector and then this bolt right here you see that wire so this I believe this is our ground yeah and uh, yeah you see that eyelet right there and the wire looks just like the wire we saw on the connector. So this is our ground wire, okay? Guys, this is stuff I cannot really do uh, this while I'm holding the camera. I'm gonna have to find a way to take this wire. I'm gonna undo this bolt and see if there's corrosion between the bolt. I mean, it doesn't look like it, it looks good. I'm gonna clean it first and see if I'm gonna get ground at the connector. If I don't, I'm going to have to rip open the wiring harness. Hopefully it's not really tough to get to or because I mean, it's just from here all the way back to there. So basically from this point up this way. So if it's just a straight wire up to the control unit over there, it's going to be pretty easy to do, but I can't really film it because everything is so dang tight here. Okay. So I'll fix this wire. And then I'll bring you guys back up and show you what I find. Okay, so but that over there is definitely our ground wire. So I will do that and bring you guys back up. All right, guys, so guess what I just found? This is the bolt I removed, you know, the bolt I just showed you over there on that ground. And here is the ground wire. <laughs> Look at this. See the eyelet? Because when I was looking at the bolt itself and the eyelet, everything looks good. But look at the wire. The wire is like chewed up. Okay. If I pull really hard on it, I'm going to break it. I don't know what happened. I don't know if a mouse came under here and chewed up this wire. So basically, this eyelet is still attached just by a couple wire strands. Okay. And this being a pretty uh, solid ground wire, and this feeds ground through the uh, control unit to the ABS motor. So the motor couldn't turn on because it wouldn't draw enough current through this ground wire. Okay, 
so this is basically what was going on and where this thing is located is just right there by so that's where it lives right there see that hole over there yeah is the bolt I just removed so here is the issue guys this is what was causing the problem okay and when I was able to bypass it up there using this bug probe it's bug probe tool I mean it's black I don't know if you guys can see it but once I bypassed it with the jumper wire and everything went back to normal so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna cut this off and I'll make a new eyelet here and I'm gonna clean this up fix it and then we will put it back together so chewed up ground wire to the ABS control unit okay so this is definitely a problem I'll fix this and bring you guys back up alright guys so I'm gonna show you what I did I did remove this eyelet the eyelet I put there is slightly smaller than this one but it's gonna work so this is the old one that was completely messed up so I did replace it by this eyelet here and this one is those heat shrink type eyelet and I did put some electric tape so this black stuff you see here is just liquid tape okay so now I'm gonna install it I'm gonna install it back there so the bolt is gonna go through and then we're gonna bolt this against the block okay so once we do and then we're gonna go back to the car and start it and see what happens actually I'm gonna bolt this and then we will test our ground at the module okay we're gonna back we're gonna test the ground there to see if we're gonna get ground after putting this eyelet on okay so let's install this eyelet and then test that wire to see if we're gonna get ground now all right guys so I did bolt that eyelet back there on the bolt I hope you guys can see it the wire is just next to the bolt right there so I did connect it back up so now let's test our ground so we're gonna test it here on the control unit itself I still have that back probe tool on that black wire with the white tracer alright so I'm gonna use this test light to test the ground wire remember we didn't have ground on that wire before so now that we fix the ground we should have ground on that wire I have my test light connected to battery positive so once I touch that back probing tool uh, the test light should light and as you can see the test light is lit so we have ground going to that wire so now I'm gonna disconnect that connector again I'm gonna put its cover back on and then we're gonna lower the car and go back inside the car and do some final, some final checks alright so I'm gonna disconnect this connector again this electrical connector for the ABS control module so here it is I'm gonna remove my back probing tool let's get that out of the way all right so now let's install this cover back on all right so I just got the electrical connector cover back on so now I'm gonna put some electric tape on the end here let's put some electric tape so now I'm going to connect it back up to the control module So right there, our connector on the ABS control module is connected back up. I will show you how it looks now. All right, so right here, there is our electrical connector for the ABS control unit. So right there, hey, 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 there it is. All right, so we just fixed this, we fixed the ground. So now let's lower the car no more bypassing it okay no more bypassing it with a jumper wire so now let's lower the car and go back inside the car so we can do some final checks all right guys so i'm back here in the car so now let's verify our repair remember before when we first started this car with the engine running the abs the traction control light and the brake light remained on on the dash with the engine running so we found out what the issue was we fixed the issue it was the ground wire to the control module so now i'm going to start the car 
so we can confirm our repair so let's see if we fixed it I'm gonna start it and let's see if the lights on the dash will go off while the engine is running and right there as you guys can see the ABS light the traction control light and the brake lights are all off so this is fixed guys we fixed the problem so now let's double check with the scan tool just to see if there are any trouble codes in memory there shouldn't be but let's just do some final checks here all right so let's go to anti-lock brakes let's go to codes menu display codes current codes and as you guys can see we don't have any trouble codes okay no codes in memory that c0110 code is no longer there okay so i guess that's it guys uh we fixed it right there no more lights this is a fix so i'm gonna get the vehicle out of the lift we're gonna take it for a spin and then we'll be back here in the shop and wrap up this video so i'll get the car out of the lift and then we're gonna go on a quick spin all right so we're ready to go for a test drive and ivan is joining me here so we're gonna go take this thing for a spin so let's go all right so i'm driving right now we are on the road and as you guys can see there are no lights on the dash okay all the lights on the dash just went off no more abs light no more brake light no more traction control light and even the tire pressure monitor light is off i had to check the uh tire the pressure on the tires the uh right rear tire was low so this is definitely a fix guys we fixed it now let's sound of the power baby <laughs> all right so i'm gonna turn off the camera and then i will turn around so we can get back to the shop so i'll bring you guys back up once i get to the shop all right so i'm back at the shop and as you guys can see our lights are still off so this is fixed i'm gonna turn off the car so what do you guys think it's fixed right so uh, I'm gonna end this here. I hope you like this video. If you do, give it a thumbs up. If you don't, give it a thumb down. But if you do, you gotta tell me why. If this is your first time here, subscribe to my YouTube channel, K Diagnostics. While you're down there, ring the bell so you can get notified every time I upload a new video. If you have any comments, questions, criticism, leave them in the comment box. Thanks for watching guys. See you next time.